Hi guys, welcome back to The Average. Um, yes, yes, I have a problem, okay? That's fine. We're gonna breeze on past. I bought more jelly paints because I really like them. You guys seem to like them. But also, I thought that I really liked the other set. So I bought the bigger version of them because... H-I-M-I because this set never had the larger version available on the site and I always wanted to buy it because you know I use a lot of paint so it would have made sense so I saw this and I scooped it up and it came in this beautiful poppy package poppy package that's not a that's uh, not a word but yeah it came in this ugh, which I'm going to reuse because I send a lot of stuff so it makes sense to reuse this and it came with this this beautiful leaflet that says a person needs to wear two things to look great. Confidence and a smile. Thank Thanks for that. Yes, it has this giant plastic casing, which is just completely unnecessary. Why? I do this and it says gouache color adore now I thought this was from the same people that made this set but it doesn't actually look like it is I mean there's no markings that it is but it came from the same shop so I don't know what to think about that because I like this set what if I don't like this set I will be very upset <laughs> get it set so this is how it looks plastic casing it's got like a really cheap handle it's pretty heavy. The back looks like this, which is kind of nice. I like that. I like the way it looks. It's kind of satisfying to look at. It doesn't really look the same as the other one at all. It's not got the same branding. But I'm kind of assuming or hoping that it's very similar paint quality to them. The last one that I checked out. Gosh, I'm not looking forward to all these packagings that I have to open. Straight off the bat, it's got obviously way more colours than the last set. It's got some really nice looking pastel colours that I will be really intrigued to try and use for my motel scheme today because obviously we're going to paint another motel scheme because that has been my sort of theme for these jelly paints. But today I was thinking what I'm going to do is paint a few scenes from the comic that I've come up with. This one comes with a foam lid which is kind of different but similar to the acrylic 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 jelly that we had um so i hope that it helps keep it fresh they just come in these little jelly cups that look good enough to eat but don't eat them i know you guys want me to but i'm not gonna i kind of live for this aesthetic whoa and now i don't know which one is which and everyone's gonna have a go at me but uh it doesn't matter let's get to unwrapping all of these Ugh. They're really gooey. I obviously have more experience in this than you because I've done like three <laughs> wash you <laughs> on that one. Ooh, that one was a good one. Satisfying when you get a good one. <laughs> Chris, seriously, come on. Got it. Ooh, this one's good. Nope. <laughs> I've never... Jesus. All the other jelly ones, like they're hard to take off, but they've never been like this. This is another level of frustration. Yeah, plastic is really brittle. Plastic is really brittle. It is. God, it's so difficult. Would you say it's brittle? And it's annoying me as well because I want to get all the little bits off because it doesn't look very nice, but it's mm. impossible. Can't give up on that one. Uh, hey! <laughs> Thanks for your help. Oop. <laughs> <laughs> what? It's okay. <laughs> A little, little bubble surprise. How have you not got paint all over your hands like me? I don't know. You're not going full in, that's why. Yeah, I'm more You've got delicate. Too much fear in your heart. <laughs> I've got more technique. <laughs> <laughs> you say as I do this. <laughs> you, you're pulling it off too quickly at the start. Oh yeah, expert now. I've adapted.
Do you hear my, my choke there? It'll just gouache off. This is frustrating enough, Chris, please. It's <laughs> Chris Jungle. <laughs> Woohoo! Oh. Trick shot. You just gotta like feel <laughs> the tear. <laughs> you two be one with the lid. That'll be you do it because you're better than me. Okay, so that was the most painful experience. I know I say that every time that I have to take the lids off these jelly paints, but this one was another level. Something I didn't notice before is that it's all kind of smashed up here. I didn't realize that until I was doing the peeling of these, but okay, that's fine. I mean, it's probably done in shipping. There is a really nice array of colors. Some of them look a bit oily, but I think that's just because I haven't mixed them up. Spoiler alert, it was because I hadn't mixed them up. They were perfectly fine to use. They were exactly like the other jelly gouaches that I have used in the past. And I really enjoyed using them. I think today I felt a little bit deflated today or something, or maybe just a little bit tired because at first it was so hard to get to something that I liked in these paintings. But eventually I get there. I started out by just painting a background for each image. What I wanted to do was to create some scenes that I had in my head from the comic. So these are a couple of scenes that I was thinking about using within the comic and one of the scenes is I think my main character is going to go stay in the motel and something a friend of hers in the past, I don't want to give anything away or too much away but I think one of her friends will have died or gone missing and then this apparition will appear to our main character in the motel asking for help and her head is sort of floating on top of her body which sounds really horrible and drastic but you know we're making a horror comic here and that is an image that I had in my head it, not an image I had in my head um, <laughs> it's part of the story that I have in my head and I thought what I'd do is do a quick study of maybe this image or the idea of it and see how it turned out. The next image is just another simple kind of 1950s style image of not a motel but sort of like an empty street where there's shops and stuff and it's kind of along the same colour palette and scheme and theme of all the other paintings that I've done that I have led up to this point and so that there's not much story behind that one it is just another environment study piece so I think I'm getting to grips with that pretty well and I think I'm establishing the mood and theme and look of the paint, um, painting, the look of the comic and I think that one really helped me to study or like realise how quick or slow it will be to create a comic with this style. So obviously these paintings took a long time and that is something that I keep referencing. I got a lot of advice in the last video in the comments to maybe simplify some of the panels of the comic and then have the really important ones really carefully painted out and there is something definitely in that idea because I think it could be kind of play playful in some panels where we have a bit of more abstract feel to them and it would reflect the disorientation of what the characters are feeling and sort of make the reader feel like that in some sense or if it's done well and right <laughs> as I hope and intend to do then it will it will make the reader feel a little bit uneased. That's kind of my plan and I think what I want to do now building on this concept is to go with that idea of making panels that are quick and a reflection of mood and just quick painting and I think it will really work reading it. I know that it would be the type of thing that I would probably pick up and want to read myself so I think that's always a good sign. People say that you should write about what you want to read or draw what you want to see I guess <laughs> and I think that's always a good thing to think about is when you're writing a book or anything you're writing this book for yourself first and foremost and that is a really important thing to bear in mind as you're going because I think it can get intimidating when you think about all the people that might read something that you've created or look at something you've created and you just have to be like no I'm making this for myself so it doesn't matter 
and keep going with that confidence because I know that we're always all trying to be confident when we do stuff like this and it's really hard because I know with anything creative you put so much of yourself into it and it is such a personal thing so it's scary to show others. I mean I remember it when I first went to university we all had to share our work with each other and critique each other's work and it was a really uncomfortable situation at first but then I just got really used to it and now I don't, I guess that led me to be able to do this kind of thing on YouTube because I didn't care after a while. I was like, yeah, look at this, I made this, it's a part of my soul, look at it. And <laughs> then my colleagues, uh, colleagues, I guess other students, I guess colleagues now at work, they just, you can rip into something and people won't take it personally, it's a critique. I think at the end of the day, if a critique is done respectfully, it's actually, it's actually really a good thing to have because if somebody's giving you advice they're taking time out of their day to tell you like hey look this is how you could improve on something and I think it's really necessary because you might not be able to see something wrong that they will see wrong. Well that was a complete tangent but anyway these are two scenes from my comic and the first one is the one of the friend, the missing friend who she may or may not know what happened to her and she's going to appear in a vision or a by her bed or something and I wanted to create that unease and I saw like these images online of like light hitting somebody you know when it hits through like those blinds that you have those cheap blinds that you can pull up I really liked the way that looked so I kind of used that as inspiration as well as another picture of a girl sort of sitting with her hands up because I felt like it was quite a creepy pose so again I was using that Pinterest uh, technique foot technique what I'm saying I use Pinterest for inspiration behind these images and I think it really helps me to see what I'm seeing in my head but more clearly and I think reference imagery is always really good to help an artist and if you're stuck on drawing something you're not necessarily going to know straight from your head how to draw something out and it might just come out really wonky so it's always good to use reference not completely straightly copying it necessarily but getting elements from it and kind of doing something in your style from a photo I think is sometimes a good thing and yeah just helps learn and helps learn helps you learn I think it really is helping me develop a lot as an artist and trying to conceptualize stuff it's really handy the comic is coming along well I think I've written half of it before and I need to keep going with it I am steadily getting the knack of doing these paintings so I want to try and do a lot of them but smaller so that's why I've done two this week because I wanted to see how long it would take me to do sort of two different scenes at once and how long like what kind of time frame it would maybe be to create a whole comic in the style because I'm thinking that it's going to be about the same size as my old comic which is um, in the link down below if you fancy grabbing a copy and that one was done with um, Copic pens and pencil and ink and you can you can check those out on my Emily is Burning vlogs that's the name of the comic I did a whole series about creating that comic and yeah I want to have a similar a similar size for this one it's not super long it's not like graphic novel size but it's not it's still a heavy undertaking so I need to bear that in mind um, when I'm thinking about how many pages it will be as I'm writing it because I don't want to go too much but then I do want to cut the story down so much that it would be lacking something so it's a fine line guys it's a fine line okay that's it that's the final images I really like the way they turned out eventually as I was saying in the voiceover it did take a while to get to that and I think this is how they are this is what they look like and I hope that you guys enjoyed watching me get through another jelly session I think this will be the last one now because I think I have enough paint to get me through making this comic so let's let's see how that turns out um if you guys really enjoyed this video please think about subscribing because it really helps the channel out and uh, give it a little like if you want to and um, yeah that's it thanks for watching guys see you next time hopefully bye